Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Wanted to bring a little thought to you this morning, or this e this morning, this uh, evening. Might be morning somewhere, uh, England or something. Um, and uh, go over a thought that occurred to me that I think throws a lot of Christians off, and that is. You know, I mentioned the other day about waiting on the Lord from Isaiah 44. And, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Look. God has his own timing on things. Okay. Okay. And part of the problem, I think, and part of the reason is that Christians lose hope, lose faith, and ultimately, you know, really damages, if not in some ways, destroys their walk with God and causes them to wither or to try, you know, to try and rely on the, themselves instead of on God. And, you know, that's the third soil, by the way. You know, not a whole lot is always said about the third kind of soil, except for people getting distracted. The third soil in the parable of the sowers, you know, I'll remind you is the first soil was the wayside. Okay. The, the ground that was so hard that the seed didn't even penetrate and the birds came along and, uh, snatched it up. And the birds in that parable were the devil it snatched it up before it could even come close to taking root. The second sort of soil was the rocky or the stony ground. And that's the one where it took root, but it was shallow. And as soon as the sun of persecution or tribulation of any kind hit, it withered. It just couldn't take the heat. Okay, you know, like uh, Truman said, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. You know, same same thing, right? It's uh, they, they, they couldn't take the heat, not even the heat from the sun, much less a fiery furnace, like I said in the previous video. Um, but then that third kind where, where the cares and concerns of this life have choked out, you know, the plant and caused it to be unfruitful. Keep in mind what that is. Why? Let's get to the why about the concerns and the cares of this world. Why would somebody be overly concerned and have the overly burdened with concerns and cares of this world? I mean, we're not just talking about being distracted by the media and the, the, the brainwashing that takes place and things like that. What is that? Being overly concerned with the concerns and the cares of this world. It is relying on you instead of relying on God. It's relying on the flesh instead of relying on the spirit. Okay? It is trying to solve your problems in your own efforts you know, with your own abilities. And therefore you've got all these cares and concerns about how to make a living, how to protect yourself, how to, how to, how to survive and all this kind of stuff. And honestly, instead of casting your cares upon him for he careth for you. Now that doesn't mean we don't have responsibilities in this life. We do. We have stewardships that we're given. We have things that we're told we're supposed, we're supposed to work and provide for our families where you know we're supposed to protect our families we're supposed to do good to those around us you know we're supposed to share of our material goods and our time you know and our you know whatever we have our talents you know we're supposed to use those things we're given stewardship don't get me wrong we're supposed to be have devotionals and pray regularly and without ceasing you know um and like I said, you know, there are things definitely handed into us. We're supposed to use every effort to add virtue and uh, patience and loving kindness to our character, right? To our salvation. We're supposed to, First Peter, you know, we're supposed to do these things. But at the same time, we are not supposed to be anxious. Be anxious for nothing, Jesus, or the Bible tells us, fear not. We're supposed to cast those cares upon God and rely on him now we sometimes the big problem is, is that what we don't see is instantaneous we live in modern day society this is worse than it's ever been 
everything's instant. You know, you need to get a hold of somebody. Instant communication with a cell phone. Right? Instant. You want information? Google it. Instant. I'm not even going to get into how reliable the information is, but it's instant it's information. It's not walking down to a library and getting an encyclopedia and looking it up. It's instantaneous. From my phone, I can get on there, Google it, bam, got my answer. Right? It's not something you have to wait for. Micro I remember when microwave ovens became popular, you know, in the 70s. My Uncle Bob was the first one I knew that had one. And we were freaking out about how fast that thing worked. Um, you know, now we've got instant streaming of any movie, TV show you could care to watch. You know, DVRs and before that, you know, CD or DVDs. And before that, VHS or Betamax, if you're old enough to remember Beta. Uh, technically a better product than VHS, but never caught on. Um, but anyway... My point is, is that instant everything, right? Instant food, instant meals, instant you name it. And we try and assume, you know, if something doesn't happen like right now, well, oh my, then it's not going to happen. I mean, nobody 30 years ago freaked out if they couldn't get a hold of me instantly. That never, why would anybody be bothered with that? I mean, my phone was in my apartment, wired to the wall. I wasn't always there, you know, and I wasn't a drug dealer, so I, or a doctor, so I didn't have a pager. And you, uh, if you, you know, you could call and leave a, a, a voicemail. Um, and if you go back a few years before that on my answered machine, you could call and leave a message, but you couldn't get a hold of me instantly, nor would you expect to. It wouldn't cause you any anxiety if you couldn't get a hold of me instantly. And because I wasn't there. And it was, uh, you know, and nobody expected me to be at home all the time. But now, if someone can't get a hold of me right now, what's going on? How come you're not answering your phone? I tried to get a hold of you. You didn't answer. That you know, Our expectations of the instantaneous ability to communicate with somebody, to get information, to have a meal, to whatever it is, is so instant that it, it conditions us to, have, to think of, God answering prayers or solving problems or building you up in the same way. I remember when I was a teenager, I ordered the Charles Atlas course, right? Give me seven days and I'll make you a man kind of thing, you know? And, uh, while you would, you, you know, while if you did his workout, you could start to see some results in seven days you weren't going to turn into Charles Atlas. You weren't going to go from the 98 pound weakling to Charles Atlas in seven days, guys. It just, it was never going to happen. You know, if it was that easy, everybody would be Charles Atlas. I mean, you know, it, 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 it was just, you know, you might start to see some results in seven days. And it really, our Christian walk is like that too. You're not going to get instant growth. Yes, some things will change with you instantaneously when you start serving the Lord and when you accept Jesus Christ. Yes, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You will you in baptized in the Holy Spirit. You'll you'll get certain instantaneous changes. But at the same time, your maturity level, your level of faith and the reason God says that he won't put anything more on than you can bear is because you're not all at the same place. We're not all at the same place. The faith of someone who's a beginner on their walk with Christ is not going to be the same as someone who has been serving the Lord for 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years. It's just not going to be the same. And you can't expect it to be the same. And 
you know, just like the same person who's been doing the Charles Atlas course for a week is going to look a lot different than the person who's been doing it for a year. You know, it's just, you're going to have different results. And so part of our thing in this life, in this current day that we live in, is to draw back our expectations of inst the instantaneous. We have to pull back from that instant mentality that we are so conditioned to have. And if we don't get it, we get so upset and disappointed and stressed out and anxious about it not being so instant. You know, so keep, keep that in mind. God has his own timing. He is going to build you up. He is going to strengthen you. He's going to strengthen your faith in the process, in the time that he sees fit. Some of you, he might put on an accelerated course. Some of you, he, it might take a long time. But staying faithful and not giving up, part of that is getting it out of your head that it's going to be done on a timetable of your expectation. Okay? It's not. It's going to be done on God's timetable. All right? Wait upon the Lord. Be patient. Long-suffering be patient okay because don't give up because it's not happening like that it takes time and sometimes it'll seem like you're making a lot of growth like a growth spurt but don't don't think that that's going to be how it always is it won't and then it sometimes it might seem like man i must have i must have hit my full potential because i don't seem to be growing at all be patient. Wait upon the Lord. Have faith. Trust God. It'll happen. Sometimes, you know, God's working above the surface. Sometimes he's working below the surface. Sometimes the roots are growing in. And you're not going to necessarily see a lot of growth above the ground. You know, God knows how to grow you. God knows how to increase you. Okay, He knows how to do it. He knows how to prune you and make you more fruitful. Trust him. Trust the plan. Get out of the microwave, oven, cell phone, Google instant mentality. And trust God to do what he's doing in you and in your life in his time. All right. Well, I just felt like sharing that this evening. I hope that meant something to somebody. Hope you got something out of it. As always, I love you. God bless you. And I'll talk to you again real soon.